Welcome to the module classifying two-dimensional figures into categories based on their properties. In this module, we will be looking at the geometry standards for fifth grade, as well as looking at strategies for teaching these standards. We will focus on classifying two-dimensional figures based on their properties. Students should be able to reason about the attributes of shapes by examining questions like, why can't trapezoids and kites be classified as parallelograms? Which quadrilaterals have opposite angles congruent? And why is this true of certain quadrilaterals? When looking at the major work of fifth grade, we can see that geometry is a supporting standard. The geometry domain accounts for 2 to 7% of the EOG. On DPI's released EOG, there were only two items dedicated to geometry. One item on the coordinate plane and the other on classifying shapes. Because there will typically only be one item on classifying shapes, we can guess that this will be related to classifying quadrilaterals. We know that geometry needs to be taught because it is in the standard course of study. However, because geometry accounts for only 2-7% to of the EOG and it is not a major work of the grade, it probably does not require the time that is allocated to it in the Cumberland County Pacing Guide. In fact, the county purposely put geometry at the end of the pacing guide and padded the time allocated to these standards in order to allow time for reteaching of other standards and preparation for the end of grade test. During this module, we will focus on classifying two-dimensional figures, specifically quadrilaterals, in a hierarchy based on their properties and address common misconceptions associated with classifying figures based on attributes. The term property in these standards is reserved for those attributes that indicated a relationship between components of shapes. For example, having parallel sides or having all sides of equal length are properties. Within the standard, the terms, attributes, and features are used interchangeably to indicate any characteristic of a shape, including properties and other defining characteristics such as angles and sides. This standard builds on what was done in fourth grade. Figures taught in previous grades include polygon, rhombus, rectangle, square, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon, and trapezoid. In fifth grade, the standard calls for students to reason about the attributes of shapes. Students are expected to reason about the attributes of shapes by examining questions such as, why can't trapezoids and kites be classified as parallelograms? Which quadrilaterals have opposite angles congruent, and why is this true of certain quadrilaterals? This standard also calls for students to reason about the attributes of figures and to build on prior knowledge of figures that have parallel sides, figures that have perpendicular sides, and figures that have both parallel and perpendicular sides, and to categorize these figures into a hierarchy based on their attributes. As students sort the figures, ask students to consider the attributes that allow a figure to be classified into a category and to compare the criteria to the given shape. It is important for students to see that when you resort the quadrilaterals into new subcategories, they still belong to the previous category. For example, although a square is classified as a rectangle, it also belongs to the parallelogram category as well as in the quadrilateral category. Students may believe that because a shape has four sides, it is a quadrilateral, and all of the sides are the same length, so it is a square. Students may fail to recognize that it also has two sets of parallel sides, so it can be classified as a parallelogram. Students may not recognize that a shape can belong to more than one category. It is important to show students examples of shapes that have multiple classifications and to discuss how the attributes of subcategories are inclusive of larger categories. In order to help students understand that shapes can have multiple names, we must start by first addressing the properties of each shape. Then, students must realize that different shapes have the same properties. In the book, Teaching Student-Centered Mathematics by John Vanderwall, there are several pages that address the properties of different quadrilaterals. Before asking students to state multiple names for a given shape, have them use the pages to determine the attributes of each shape by looking at their sides, angles, diagonals, and symmetry. You may access these sheets by clicking on the link in the comments section below the video. Then scroll to pages 30 to 33. students learn about the attributes of shapes, this is a great tool for discovering if shapes have shared attributes. For example, you can challenge students to see if a rectangle can also be a square. Through 
exploration, students will discover that squares are subcategories of rectangles. Then, challenge students to see if a rectangle can be made into a trapezoid. By North Carolina definition, a trapezoid had one and only one set of parallel lines. Through exploration, students will discover that trapezoids are not subcategories of rectangles. One note to teachers, before clicking on a new shape, be sure to press the clear button before selecting the new shape. Thank you for viewing this video.